beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online. They may not be able to see us, but they can hear our clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them. Thanks to the power of technology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want your spirit to be very sensitive. I want to, it's a prayer meeting. We're going to pray tonight. But I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly, truly empower us. You know, I, I sat back and I was thinking today, just thinking of the, the topics, the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the Lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom I was teaching the school of ministry students and um, I taught them something that I think is, is, is good for us to know. I said, um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation. In every dispensation, there is a dimension of the dealings of God that he apportions for that generation to know about him. And it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that he has a portion for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me I am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah Paul said I went up by revelation not by desire 
I went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory the revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is it is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided he will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time are we together now so God can step into a place like Zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough and so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring. It becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being. And they are not lying. Because divinity is swallowing you up gradually. And you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit. Like you see someone manifesting under the anointing ordinarily you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed when you see someone manifesting unusual strength you know that that is another agency through him every time you align in the spirit you help to advance the purposes of God let me tell you something God is searching for men he still is searching for men never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that god is finding a people no alignment is not something that um is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you 
and when that happens he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of god has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in god's presence you are busy people stay in god's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of god the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say i'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory spirit of the living god i have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit i have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let a deposit of eternity be upon me mm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime i have come to eat of the bread of the spirit this is bethel the place where the spirit of god will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down listen it is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes you see sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome you prepare for battle before battle 
you don't prepare for battle during battle are we together don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth and then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another part and cause your wife to give birth don't wait until they drive you from work and then you now say what is the mystery of favor again no you are too late surround yourself with mysteries like chariots so that when the devil fires his arrow before it gets to you a revelation you have in store will arise the the shield listen that shield is a defense whether you are sleeping or awake you have a bad dream you are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm he shall keep his angels charge over me don't react to things when they come are we together now yes don't wait until the day they tell you oh something happened and you are now panicking no god is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you someone comes and meets you and says we're in trouble and you say what happened rain washed our house you say glory be to god don't worry there is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint listen your confidence in life is based on the the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with fear is a product of ignorance you will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation this is the reason for fear you never fear anything you have control over ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives so we don't know whether we are going to live or die we say we don't know whether we'll be rich or poor we don't know whether we'll be successful or failures we don't know whether people will favor us or not god cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear no the antidote to fear is knowledge knowledge so that when your uncle looks at you and says i can't help you again i'm sorry you know how you say uncle thank you thank you for what you have done so far because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above it only comes through men not from men so if one man is not available heaven is still available and he can find another man that revelation alone settles you so you are not jumping around and saying, uncle what can we do that's a foolish and stupid way of speaking it's like going to a filling station all fuel comes from the ground not the filling station so if the filling station packs up we know that there's still fuel in nigeria all you need to do is look for another filling station are we together now may god grant us knowledge see the bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic it's not because you are young or old it's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman it's not because you are living in the north or south uh -uh. it's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence nobody is born with confidence it's a resultant effect of something joy is a product of something that you know fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know hallelujah please sit down i have such passion to see us grow in the spirit so we don't just deceive ourselves and say i'm a spiritual man a spiritual man is not is not something ambiguous there are exact standards that can measure spirituality spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and say I am spiritual no there are clear spiritual standards if they have been met you are spiritual if they have not been met you are not spiritual it's as simple as that hallelujah That's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in week out because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here 
someone's life is dependent on what is shared here this is an issue of life and death it's not just an issue of a voluntary thing no it says they are alive to those who find them that means those who don't find them can die are we together now life is spiritual that's why the bible says everything listen it says everything that is done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness this is not my teaching but i just felt a need to do that everything in the house of god must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing otherwise it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow god's presence find expression if you are a cleaner in the house of god you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set you can't say i'm not a member of prayer department i'm just a keyboardist this thing this gentleman is playing is not just music if his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem the sound that will come out from there will obstruct what god is doing in your spirit he will be playing the same thing and wonder why it's not edifying you because he's playing his secret place amplifying it to people he's not playing music a gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual you will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such carnality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality nobody should serve in the house of god just because he's talented no your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people so we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very very gifted people but all kinds of spiritual obstructions you see someone who hold a mic beautiful voice but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him you love the song but something about the voice there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that that's why we pray that's why we wait in his presence it's not just to increase skill it's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven and everything that is communicated to you even if it is something you have had before it comes with a fresh anointing it comes with a fresh atmosphere and it can cause transformation you are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of god no any church anybody that cannot host the presence of god in their meetings capture the presence of god is a cinema it's a complete waste of time so everything must be done under the anointing we have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time be spiritual as an usher you are not just holding people under the anointing you are not just cleaning seats you are spiritual are we together now someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service not just your service the spirituality of it someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching my preaching not just the dispensing of gifts but the spirituality of it that's what can bring the transformation and bring the miracles I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill it's not so much about action but the the fire the passion the presence the glory that backs up what we do that's what produces the results
tonight i want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer pay attention i'm going to share something with you that will bless your life the altar of prayer i want us to understand the mystery of altars Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Hallelujah. Listen. The body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer, when it comes to the issue of warfare, when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm. There is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations. That's what I've been seeking to do. To teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization are we together now altars most people do not know what altars are and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory 
if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said okay there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said am i my brother's keeper i said ah, don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the lord whether in you are sleeping whether you are awake it kicks that reality you will be saved because there is an altar that eternally secures that there are many platforms that god has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure 
of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils would fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer
in james chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us james chapter 5 verse 16 i want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray james 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says availed much availed much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is genesis chapter 28 we are not turning there for time's sake but many of us know it i'm just giving you a little theological background um abraham had passed across a region and the bible says that he set up an altar there and many years later jacob his son are we together now a son in the flesh now a, a generation now was passing that place and the night time came and he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was god himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not Jacob slept there, you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason, cross across that place and something happens to you. All of a sudden, you find out that the sickness just disappeared. You didn't pray. Now, you are wondering what happened. Now, you don't know. It was Jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing. The same way Elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the jordan and he said elisha asked i'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand here today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call lawn tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell 
because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of god with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if i practice obedience consistently i have yielded my members to obedience i become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if i steal this handkerchief watch this if i steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if i do it again and i do it again that i don't know i'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally are you learning something because you see not all altars were consciously built but they are still altars so it is when i say altars that are destroying you it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say if you don't tell us what you have done we will beat you no he may be innocent this is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of god or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience i'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of god has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back the same no a young man came around samuel and stood naked prophesy morning till night that's an altar when saul went and met samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered 
I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of seven listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar i activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you I didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem but an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of God's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship Luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at Matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 is actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God but he went to spend time all night communing communion give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion it's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse 
look at all the platforms till today listen till today how jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication if you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the holy ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um i'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear god is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him i was counseling a couple some i think i don't know if it was last week and um the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and i said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and god there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of god is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you god must know how to reach you on serious informations god must know how to reach you on trivial informations he must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit that place of training is the secret place i will never trade anything for my time with him that's where men are built that's where there is an exchange see let me tell you holding a mic and teaching is not difficult holding a mic and preaching is not difficult but communicating life that one is a derivative of your altar that's why we sleep in church that's why our churches are full of dry bones from the preacher to those listening all dry bones people stand and talk they say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you because there's no altar they are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit number two quickly why do we need the altar of prayer prayer creates a legal platform for god prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access prayer creates a legal platform mark the word legal it has to be legal the realm of the spirit is a legal realm the dealings of god with men are on legal grounds that's why god could not just pronounce men justified the system had to be followed to the latter prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene 
in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally I know that many of you are surprised why should God Almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that I think will bless you Psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of Christ Psalms 115 and verse 16 then give us Ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31 Psalms 115 verse 116 can we read it together one to read the heaven even the heavens other versions say the heaven of heavens are the lords read on but the earth as a territory has he given to where watch this let me give you a little explanation if if a jimmy has a house are we together and he decides to rent that house to me now it is true that it is still his house but does he have a right to just enter anytime again no even if he comes to that house although it is your house but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you so even as the landlord you will still knock and i have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy and you will still go so god is still the lord of all creation but he carved out a domain of his kingdom apportioned it to man and it became scripturally incorrect for god to come to the earth without a man permitting him that's why the holy spirit had to move michael gabriel to come and ask for permission from mary before jesus entered her womb mary could not just see her womb no 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 it was a discussion this is what we want to do can your womb be available the, what was the permission be it unto me i authorize you how shall these things be don't worry about the dynamics your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding be it unto me and he had to go to joseph and say joseph you are about to see something strange in your wife now i know that is going to shock you but please 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 don't drive her there is a mystery she's carrying and joseph calm down look at how god had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission permission one by one while he was doing that he was breathing upon anna the prophetess to keep praying breathing on simeon in the temple to keep praying john the baptist who will baptize and ordain jesus his father wanted to play with redemption he thought he was just playing with a sacrifice an angel appears to him and says mr man your wife is going to have a child the name is john and he, met, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said no 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 this guy would disallow or shut his mouth he's a priest meaning he, there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys it can disallow and allow reality so he said shut his mouth this this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing and they shut his mouth not as wickedness as a strategy to make sure John arrives so that Jesus will be commissioned when John was born they said what shall we name him the wife said John they said no we've not had this name then they went to the dumb father now mr. man what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel what did you hear and he wrote on the book John is that a prayer and his mouth opened God said now you can say anything you want to say you have authorized heaven now watch this look how hard it is for God to find expression in the earth he must go around that's why I taught you about the gift of men God cannot be the author of death knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him for 430 years God was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer not if he promised Abraham captivity for 400 years but even God became limited for 30 extra years until Moses was trained are you blessed John the Baptist found himself in the wilderness 
the requirement to ordain Jesus he ate locusts and wild honey had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized Jesus Christ and that was all and Jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that God is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized God can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord the earth has he given to the sons of men Elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg God he went and said I lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so I lock it up and I put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word but the Bible James Apostle James had a revelation of what he did he said don't think he just spoke grammar he went and locked himself and prayed earnestly he was a man of like passion but he allowed God Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 please quickly many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role we have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance and I search for a man among them listen who is talking here God to his prophet why will God be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today I sought for a man among them that should make up what a hedge a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness I'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but I'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that I want Satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and God keeps watching it ravage you for decades and God is saying I'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise I was until I learned this I was surprised how God would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah, ah, but God can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me Matthew 6 he was teaching them the Beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as I hear you say before my ears so will I do please leave it there I sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so let's see what would happen in 31 Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even Pharaoh and his army slain by the sword said the Lord Ezekiel 22 you're giving us a wrong scripture here that's what I gave you right Ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media are we there please help help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy The scripture I'm looking for the scripture that therefore have I poured out that is what we just read therefore have I poured out my word indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have I recompense upon their heads 
in other words it looks like i'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become a alt an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen god is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening there are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world but he must find a people that's why men are a serious business to god many of us act unassisted many pastors act unassisted the realm of the spirit is available to assist but until we call until we call pray in tongues for one minute and say lord i call you i call you into my life and into my situation i don't assume you are aware i authorize you shabras kataba segete kalabaru sasibriyasha Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For 30 years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Every year, someone is dying. Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabras katako sibaria sakato bashiba. Ten graduates, no one is employed. Ten ladies, no one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto sobakai. Everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come, another mystery kicks in. Everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. Now the devil wants it to happen to me. Shakato soto pes kalabaratosia. Embre toka dose de keleka sosia. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen, let me tell you. I studied my life, I studied my lineage, I studied my family. And I saw things that I knew were not funny. I knew that those things were activations. And if I were to answer the call of God upon my life and prevail, something must happen. An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a higher anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduates, my mother graduates, 10 of us in our family graduate. Nothing is working. It will continue like that because there is something making God look like a wicked person I sought for a man in your family it's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a Christian I sought for a man who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders wanting to deliver the nation of Israel from Egypt imagine how the heart of God bled when he saw the soldiers of Pharaoh 
weeping God's covenant people man who is the man that I will send in Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel stood before the dry bones I thought God would say bones come back to life he said Ezekiel you know this law of territory I can't speak and it will just happen so I will tell you I will speak from heaven to you then you speak now in the earth I prophesied as I was commanded when God spoke the bone did not move when he prophesied as he commanded all of a sudden there was a sound oh God spoke to me in a vision I, I had that dream and God said it's over and you get up and just smile you are joking it will never be over it was over in the realm of the spirit what you do with that encounter is to stand up put that word and say I legislate I agree with you Lord my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement that's why we have many dreams that never come to pass you see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit you see zero in the physical you see a job in the realm of the spirit you see demotion in the physical God told you his intention in the realm of the spirit your carelessness aborted it in the physical take seriously what I'm saying the same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet and then the day something devastating happens you say hey I saw this thing that's a pain in the heart of God because he, he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness when God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets they were angry read your Bible they say God hid this thing from me number three what is the third purpose of the altar of prayer the altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance God gave man dominion over creation it will take man exercising it and prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion the Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet so although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense because before your arrival another altar had been raised and so it will take you enforcing dominion I may come from this family but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened no the same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware that is the implication are we together now a woman may be for instance um, having a particular biological disease maybe a hepatitis or something and give birth to an innocent child and they say that child also has hepatitis did the child ask for it no genetic conditioning is the same way what stopped your father stopped your mother you laughed at them and quarreled them he's still waiting for you because until it is destroyed listen let me tell you something about altars for as long as an altar is said it's alive the covenant will keep working that's the concept of priesthood priesthood is a system to keep altars alive so that covenants will remain in force so that certain dimensions will continue to operate there are many things that will not obey you until you force them to there are many things in your life your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life that's a joke it's a costly joke 
you will not get a job just because you got first class you will not be promoted just because you think you are due nothing is fair in this life everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge apostle life is so unfair to us in the family i sympathize with you but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in listen if you want to take your portion in this life you are going to take it by enforcing compliance your church will not grow just because you think you're a nice pastor being nice is not the seed for results the ability to exercise dominion are we together yes it takes prayer there are many people who don't pray they just get up and please come you just see someone and and he say pastor pray for me and your ego is on the line and you know that you have not sustained power with god no altar of prayer and you just believe you just lay your hand and you lay your hands in the name of jesus the bible says yes it said yes the bible said but it takes your life to activate that reality the bible says they shall lay hands on the sick god said it i believe it it settles it you are a joker you are a big joker no it doesn't settle it no it doesn't settle it there is a dynamic to manifestation let's not mock ourselves and you try to pray for this person and all of a sudden number one he's not healed number two it backfires on you are we together now all of a sudden you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for the tragedies and calamities in his life you brought yourself through ignorance and the whole thing backfired on you we are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars they give you a job and you enter the company you are not the ceo you are walking there you don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment until you create your own climate you will be a victim of the default climate there are people who fraternize with the devil i will employ people to work for me but they will never rise above me so if the man goes down everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant now you got a job fresh from the university your blood is hot everybody dances around church you carry your certificate and all of a sudden you are earning three hundred thousand but you cannot bring out ten thousand you are not a drunkard you don't pursue women you don't know what happened an altar swallows up that thing that's what i'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents so we think the solution is promotion oh god promote me then your salary is now four hundred thousand. the effect is still the same but a woman who went to a man of god and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying akara somewhere in the junction and with that akara she trained seven children in school it's not akara she was assisted by the realm of the spirit no, sir. you don't train children with with frying a car there you can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of hundred thousand and she will laugh she will say i'm coming she will enter the room and bring it out yet you claim that you are doing a white collar job and the altar fights you listen please pay attention to what i'm telling you whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit an altar prevailed believe what I'm telling you Zaria has an altar the effects of the altar in Zaria is predictable you see it in the civilization of the people you see it in what happens to people the marginalizations that people never rise to certain dimensions you came to Zaria and just thought it's all about going to church no you create your climate you create your climate that's why it says yeah though i walk though i walk through a valley that has the shadow of death i fear no evil because i carry another climate thy rod and thy staff they comfort me so you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years you know you are aware in your village you've seen people dying like chickens 
but you come with another order you understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything and you are enjoying long life you are enjoying grace the person who married earliest in your family was 45 are we together and you look and you say no you get married then you must spend five or ten years to have your first child if you sit down and keep watching it and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance it will never work I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God which is based on their consistent sufferings they conclude that God is not a merciful God but he said I sought for a man that through the altar of prayer you can nullify certain activities legal ordinances that have been erected to speak you will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now no sir you have lived too long to have created one by mistake you have lived too long on earth if you are up to one years old welcome to the reality of this life there has to be something speaking the bible says the sin of disobedience is like what witchcraft witchcraft what is the operation of witchcraft so we all want to rise it's a year of triumph and there is you think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother and the day you hear that they are dead you rejoice the priesthood died but the altar is still alive you see that and the altar is fine and good doing well that's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around the solution is through spiritual intelligence to lift up a spiritual fortification that vetoes everything brothers and sisters you will leave heaven on earth all of a sudden they will watch you ah, you've been in zamfara for three years but you are returning as if you're in the uk you can fly to uk with that altar it will wait for you at Heathrow airport as soon as you are landing you enter and all the doors close people who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to work against you and you thought it's just something in nigeria and at the end of it you come back after five years looking like a thief where have you been uk are you sure yes why are you like this you know the way life is people smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to germany and uk whereas they think that's the greener pasture the greener pasture is the altar you raise that speak that speak that speak until jesus came there was a universal altar speaking against man vengeance vengeance but when jesus came he established another altar that spoke better promises better things I cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be all right I know things will not be all right if they will be all right you must create it you must create it so I enforce compliance will the devil leave you because he thinks God anointed you no no Satan is not that cheap you are going to contend that's why he said put on the whole armor put on the whole armor there is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life destroy your ministry destroy your business destroy your destiny you get married to a very lovely wife you loved her with all your heart they ask both of you will you love yourself you say yes the moment you married everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony now you are nice people this altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you and all of a sudden a good woman but you find out that your entire life starts going down and if you meet a a prophet who is not sound in scripture he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure based on prophetic insight he has seen that there is an altar associated with her it's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall the individual may be the nicest person in the world 
but the altar will not change please hear what i'm teaching you and there are men no matter what happens if they marry maximum three years the wife must die and all of a sudden from the day the dear lady got married he may be a pastor apostle prophet how many men of god have altars fighting them they look around and they claim nothing is happening and they assume that because they took on the call for ministry god is too generous to allow them it's a joke no sir and this man gets married to this dear lady and all of a sudden she starts sleeping mysterious sicknesses she never had heart palpitations she will feel being pressed and she says my husband i don't know what is wrong i'm at, since we got married i say are you trying to say i'm a witch look at what the altars are causing then two of them go for counseling and they meet a man of god who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence and he says look it's how marriages are just take it easy pray together and it doesn't mean what he's saying and they say okay they say hug your wife in front of me they now hug themselves hold my hand darling they go back home the altar say well come back by evening that man has slapped her again remember he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again but the altars brothers and sisters that's why god puts meetings like this because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening you just feel something left me i don't know what happened and you go back and you who would have you would have blown somebody out of anger you find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry that can make you insult anybody is no longer there because there is an altar this ministry you see is an altar we don't have an altar this is it's a it's an altar that's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down nobody is aware because the altar speaks all of a sudden a man of god will teach them how to raise altars and they will raise an altar of prayer and come and say look we are not bad people the devil is confusing us here you are a good woman i'm a good person we did not negotiate where to come from and all of a sudden day one shekato praskataya now watch what is happening they are holding their hands and praying after that day they just feel good but nothing really happens I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted they too she the, the man doesn't want to pray but she says honey remember we're on a project here you know what we, are, we have left at home let's do this thing after one week two weeks somebody starts having a dream somewhere after one week a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody an effect is being created in the realm of the spirit it's not a sign of witness you can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not it can't be for too long listen to me that's what is happening to some of you now it was after your seven days of prayer you had a strange dream you have never had you thought it's a sign that you are losing it's a sign of victory something is happening in the realm of the spirit all of a sudden you went to sleep and you saw a vision of your mother when she was young your father when he was young the spirit of god is trying to show you something follow him but that's when the spirit of slumber comes god keeps saying for one month wake up by two o'clock there's something i'm doing in your life after two weeks you don't wake up again you see how we cheat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign hello him I promise you if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight many of you as soon as you go back you will see the dream you will have this night the devil hates what you are hearing because this is the age-long mystery that has kept people in your family educated bodies like they are not educated 
a pastor you are blessing people but you never rise yourself do you know why because your victory is tied to your altar not just your service your altar i created an altar that is independent of koinonia and i said no devil will come and destroy me no no watch this please come again the two weeks we are praying shabrakato sotobash lebre koto shabaya we are praying we are praying we are fasting something starts happening one day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit if that prayer were two hours a day will come it will become a vigil not by not because you like it there will be you will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say daddy i saw a man in white and i saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same there are pastors the altars that fight them and in first race of their ministry something happens people start living they have raised so many people but have not been raised by themselves there are altars i've seen it fight people i've seen it fight people i know these altars fought me for years you go to sleep a strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream you get up and say sorry i don't know what is happening someone is about to marry you here comes a stranger again what is bringing the stranger have you ever asked you relocate to another house he still looks for you and comes they are about to promote you in the office all of a sudden your physical document disappears physical document how many students seated here that's the mystery behind the results you are seeing the ugly results that you are seeing you love god and you are sincere but that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board you are not that dull you write your exams and go back the altars continue writing things continue writing things i know what i'm saying listen to me you hear people coming here with four points they were not born that way they have tapped into a higher covenant you see them surprised by their own results they know it's not their efforts that's why people join certain ministries join certain men of god see people partner with certain anointings this is the mystery of partnership when you partner with an anointing you access the covenant the covenant not the promise the covenant There are parents today the moment you are 50 years arthritis you get up one morning father cannot work mother cannot work their entire pension is spent on it it's not sickness it's a programming an altar is accurate with digital precision regardless of your foreknowledge it will work it will work I have seen it destroy families i have seen it destroy ministries that's why certain ministries remain small no matter how anointed they are an anointed man with fire on his head but he will not cross certain boundaries once they reach 200 something must happen a wrong news will spread around a scandal must come whether it's true or not have you not seen students their last and final exams they will go and the spirit will start moving them carry something to the exam hall they don't want to but it's an altar you are too weak to fight it you will promise that you will not take it and you take it as soon as you are sitting they just catch you and they said your entire six seven years cancelled brothers and sisters it's an altar there are families that as a family they are victims of abuse everybody mother 
father, brothers, all the daughters will eventually meet a man of God somewhere. And all the man of God will do is to destroy them. It will happen. They are scattered in every place, but their experiences are the same. You will see them and like them, but at the end of it, you must leave them with pain. They think is that the ministry is bad, but the issue is the altar. There are altars. You give birth to men, they must die. They must die. Something must kill them. No matter how healthy they are, they must die. Brothers and sisters, I have seen this evil. It exists. Tonight we are going to pray. Are we together? When it's time, I'm not going to give you a prayer point. When it's time to pray, we are going to pray. Tonight you are going to erect. Many of you as you pray tonight, you will see what will begin to happen to you. I want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight. And say, Lord, this demon that molests me in my sleep, I can't be pretending that it's not there again. These animals that come to me in my sleep, no. I started a business well. Why is it that I start good things? Something evil must come. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I stand on behalf of myself and my family. And I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny. I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Shabra takata. Shabra toko sotobash. I tear it down. Altars of delay. Altars of barrenness. Altars of failure. Raka toko to bereketesh. Le berekoto sotobesh. I tear it down. I tear it down. 
I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pair yourselves two two. Find find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaria. Embre tekas katafras kalabakuria dabashia. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly. Tonight I invoke the blood. Let the blood speak. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every legal access, every legal access, every legal access, I have given any altar of darkness. Shabras kata, matele kotosia. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Shabras kata bareto shobreke segete, lembreto shobreke te kala baba baba. Mante prete ko shobebesh, lika te preskara, lebro so so preti shi. Shelika te koto shobreke ta, pre so bere asaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We're still praying, please. We're still praying. Shalapakaya. We're still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We're still praying. We're making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories. 
associated with territories I come against you by the God of heaven I come against you pray pray I come against you Hallelujah. 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 Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years, but it looked like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Self time in the name of Jesus every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny restore relationships restore finances restore mantles restore ministries pray pray let your prayer be heartfelt. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to do
travel. Call it everywhere it is. Bella Kato Sobren Neketia. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Understanding, Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. hallelujah many of you may not realize what is happening to you please i don't want you to idolize this teaching no it's not about religiosity it's about proper understanding and application so it's not just coming to lie down here no 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 the altar is a revelation we are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives listen because many of us here the only time you pray is when you are together with people satan started attacking you he gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life he will never attack it at once he can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to pray I receive it right now lift your voice and begin to pray fire fresh fire on my altar fresh grace to pray fresh grace to fast fresh grace to intercede fresh grace for warfare i command every dead prayer life around my life come back to life come back to life hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer point and i will pray for you there are many of us the spirit of god started revealing things to you because you were meeting with him every day but something happened no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life no access to illumination you used to be you used to have projects that you and god are on 
you can literally say we are on a faith project but now there's nothing like that your life has become stale and barren some of you is when you started ministry this this so-called thing called ministry that's what destroyed you we are going to pray a prayer of restoration and the fire will fall upon you i like you to pray say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say holy spirit i ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies I pray for you now I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names everyone hearing me and standing here whether inside or outside you have prayed if there is any altar as i speak now that is speaking against your life at the count of three i command those altars to catch fire right now please get ready the power of god will come on people one two three i command those altars now be broken be broken be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here failure it has nothing to do with academics it makes you fail in everything i stretch my hands may that fire anyone here who is a victim that altar is speaking i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i judge those altars now 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 by fire I judge those altars now. Lord, my altar is calling you. My secret place is calling you. With my worship, I'm calling you. My worship, Hallelujah. See, right from outside. Well, this started while I was praying. But right from outside, as soon as I entered, you know how prisoners move and they tie chains. I was hearing the noise of many chains right from outside as soon as the car dropped. Please take serious what we are sharing tonight. 
I want you to pray and say whatever degree of influence the devil is claiming over your life and your family this night this night please pray Yes, Lord. Yes, the mighty visitation. Get angry in your spirit. I hear the chains falling. Yes. I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. listen the Lord is showing me certain people you have been experiencing movement in your body especially your stomach please come out quickly things move physically physically in your body please come out quickly to break every chain please save our time save our time we have a lot of things to deal with to break every chain break every chain to break every chain, 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 Those of you in front, lift your hands. That devil of darkness, lift your hands because that yoke is about to leave you. That snake, that moving object, for many of you, you will leave. I'm going to count three. Just those of you in front, I like you to shout Jesus at the count of three. It will jump out of you. Many of you will feel it physically. Physically, lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Let your fire and out of three. Every stranger in this body yeah. on the mark said, Go now, one, I two, three. Holy, shake up. Oh! 
someone is gone now your right leg you literally feel it move it's like a snake it moves there is a leg it ties your stomach literally you feel a lot of contraction is going right now madam come hold my hands that's the lady i'm talking about bring her let her go now now out of her that devil of darkness in the name of Jesus out go 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 I hear the chains falling I prophesy upon your life those of you standing every foul devil of darkness that has found its way into your body that is responsible for all kinds of devilish infirmities I command you to live now I command you to live now return back to your seat rejoicing we are going to take testimonies return back to your seat bring the lady I feel the chains Falling, let her go out now. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I see the chains. I see the chains falling. Lift your hands, everybody. I hear the Hallelujah. God is going to deliver families right now. Please lift your hands. There will be representatives of families right now. Let me tell you something. There are all kinds of things speaking against families. See, I have an apostolic calling. I'm not a pastor. Are you getting me? My job is not to just motivate you. My job is to destroy and annihilate the works of darkness. Are you getting my point? So we are going to pray. The fire that fall in this place right now. There will be a baptism of fire. Some of you will feel the physical fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three. You're going to shout that name Jesus. And as you shout it. Many of you will be shocked. The power of God will hit you like a tornado. I tell you. It's not just you. God is visiting families right now. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Worshippers, are you ready? At the count of three, with the clash of the cymbal, with every instrument, shout at the top of your voice, my God, let the fire of the Spirit visit families. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. Jesus! I set the altars on fire. I set it on fire outside. Outside, I release the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil is a liar tonight. Please bring them out. Ultra, save time. Some of you join the ultras if they are too slow. Please. 
I set it on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. I set it. That devil that will not let you go must go for you tonight. I give the chains for you. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lift your hands. There are still more people. Lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just the clash of the cymbal. Lift your hands. Just the cymbal. Lift your hands. The fire of God is still coming on people. Just lift your hands. Keep them lifted. Shake it. Yes, Lord. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Like the dew of heaven. Right now, let it fall. Let no one stand. Bring them out. Mighty deliverance is happening in this place. I tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever said you will not go tonight must go for you. I give the chains falling. falling. Lift your hands. We are still praying. There are many of you, listen, please. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are many of you that your sickness is not really sickness. Bring them out, please. Your sickness is a demonic oppression. What you need is not healing. For these are the kinds of people God will visit right now. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing blue flames in the sky. Instrumentalists, don't stop playing, please. Hallelujah. Blue flames. And the Lord told me this one is to take away the spirits that sponsor sickness. Lift your hands. Many of you will be very surprised. That certain things you have been calling diseases are yokes of darkness. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you're going to shout Jesus again. As you shout Jesus, many of you, those spirits will literally jump out. Jump out of your life. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. Inside and outside, God is visiting everyone. At the count of seven, please, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Six, seven. Every spirit, spirit, spirit that sponsors sicknesses. Spirits, sicknesses, we only pray sicknesses now. things that manifest like sicknesses. You keep wasting your money on drugs. It's leaving you. Don't wait till you come out. Deliverances are happening to people. Now all of those who are here, Satan, you and every demonic cohort, at the count of three you are living right now, 
hear me, all these spirits. Now, one, two, three, go, 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 out, 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 out now, out, out, come out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. This is very important. The Lord is showing me someone you've been having. It's like something is hooking you on your neck. Just your neck. You try to cough as if you want to cough it out. Please, who is the person? The Lord is ministering to me. There's somebody with that situation. Please, once I call your case, don't waste our time. We are trying to beat time. Honestly, there is done. It will go now. Sister, look at me. Look at me. That thing will disappear. Hold my hands. Out. Now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My hands. Place one hand on your throat. Out. Now. All of you just lay your hands there. Let me just pray at once. Please, we are not playing pranks. We are going to take some testimonies right away. There are people who are receiving miracles right now. Please be checking yourself. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Lay your hands. Father, let this demonic thing that is hooking your people go as a sign of the release you are bringing. Right now in the name of Jesus, it leaves. What's wrong with this baby? Come. Are you the mother? Yes, sir. What's wrong with him? Sometimes he's still hiccup. Hiccups. Look at this boy, as small as he is. Stops now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He stops and does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you mother. Right now help her please. This, this cause of delay in your life is gone. Now. Let her go. Leave her now. Jesus. I proclaim you healed now. Please go back and check yourself. Go back and check yourself. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Hallelujah. Please, are you listening to me? It's like muzzle pull. You can just be moving and it will hook you. And you can just stand on your leg. This has been happening again and again. You feel it like muzzle pull. It just holds your leg. Move. Please, who is the person? Come, just lay your hands there. They're praying for you right now. It will leave you right now. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit. Please lay your hands there. It is going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, let your power rest upon them 
and let that demonic thing go. Be gone now. 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 And as I lay my hands, just check yourself. Now. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself now. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Check yourself. We'll take testimonies. Hallelujah. See, miracles are happening. Let's, let's just finish up and then we'll have time for testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing a lady. Hallelujah. Please, let's have our attention. The Lord is ministering to me. He's showing me a lady. You had, I think you saw a cat. Now, I don't know if it's physically or spiritually. You saw a cat. It came to fight with you. And from that time, you've not been feeling fine. You're feeling like there's something inside you. Who is the person? A cat. A cat. It's an encounter with a cat. The Lord showed me. Please, inside or outside. When we get that person, let, let the person come out quickly. Quickly. I need to pray for the person. This is very demonic and we must deal with it. A cat. You saw it. It came. I don't know what, what, happened, what transpired, but it's a very demonic thing. Please, when we have the people, let's deal with it. Now, I'm going to pray for the sick. Those who are sick. Please, all of you who are sick, just come and line up. If you can form two lines, one in front, one at the back. Very quickly. You came here sick. Please. This is a miracle service. We're here for you. We're not in a hurry. Ushers, please coordinate them or protocol whoever. Coordinate them. Just make two lines, one in front, one at the back. Please hurry up. Worship us. Give us a very powerful worship while we get the devil out of these people's lives. Thank you. Now it's time for God to minister to the sick. While you're standing, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. It must leave me now. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all. All you could ask. I want you to see that sickness for the last time because it's leaving you. According to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal. Somebody help me. Please, as I lay hands on you, just begin to check yourself. Check yourself. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise. Hey, he's there! 
de mí se oh, Aleluya oh, oh, oh. Aleluya Who brought this? What's, what's the problem? You have a uh, father Who brought this small girl? Auntie, where are you? Who is who brought this small girl? Please, if you bring people that are very small, come with them. Is you? Come, Auntie, come. What's wrong with her? She's sick. What do you mean she's sick? What's wrong with her? Cough. Eh? She's coughing. Oh, cough. Oh, okay, that's all right. God bless you, sweetheart. Look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you? You believe Jesus can heal you? Let me explain something. There are some of you who, when I pray for you the way you are looking at me, it's as if you don't believe what I did. I ask you what is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm just flowing by the spirit. When I lay hands, some of you are trying to explain and you feel bad that I'm not responding. I don't need to know. The same power will solve the problem. Are you getting my point? Occasionally, I may ask you, it is just, I'm just flowing as the spirit is leading me, okay? Bless you, worshipers. Please continue.
my son. I asked him to come here. But I don't know whether he's here. Daniel Uchiji. He's well, all right. He's, he's all right. He's all right, sir. Son, please. Daniel, what? Just about two, three months ago. So I've taken him to hospital. First hospital. What was the issue? What's the issue? Maybe like he put a lot of saliva in his mouth. His mouth has burned to one side. It's not working normal again. It's not smart again. It's not working. It looks like an imbecile. But he was not born like this. This thing started like just about three months ago. Yes. What? See how wicked the devil is. What happened to him? I mean, what? What? Uh, according to him, he plays ball. He's a goalkeeper. According to him, he's a goalkeeper. He's, yes. He said he dived and hit his head on, on against stone. The first hospital I took to, they say it affected his head, his brain. But when I went to a teaching hospital last time, the consultant said there's nothing like that. But he fell to a pediatric uh, clinic, which were, were given an appointment by February. But I believe God will work upon him. That I say we should come here this morning. Absolutely. Look at me, boy. Does he understand me? Don't worry, don't worry, sir. It's okay. Look at me. Jesus will heal you right now. Huh? Mm? Look at the boy crying. It's okay. Don't cry. This is why this meeting is put together. If this is the only guy that we heal and he experiences the love of Jesus, let me tell you, this sacrifice is worth it. Are you hearing me? Boy, look at me. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. See, look at the father. Oh, please, please, somebody help this man with a handkerchief. Mm -hmm. I beg you, sir. Please. Or anything, please. Let's let this is please, please, sir. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You may not know how much he has been spending. You see, this is a wicked thing. You see what pains me? This is why we deal with these things. It's all right. Please, 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 daddy. It's all right because I know why you are crying. You are not just crying because of him, you are crying because your finances are tied. Is that true? This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Is that true? Yes, sir. Why you are crying? You are not just crying. I have cancer. But I'm here for both this my son and my mother. I've been to you about two weeks ago. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please help him with it. Please. Brothers and sisters, when a man cries, the situation, this is not. I think this man is a police officer also. When a police officer is crying, thank God for Koinonia. Boy, look at me. Can he talk? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say in the name of don't worry, I'll pray for you. That demon that is responsible for this, you are leaving this boy now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out now. Come out of him. That issue of partial paralysis is gone right now. That saliva is gone. Stand up. Come on, look at me. Shout it. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the Father rejoicing. Look at. Give Jesus praise. This is why this meeting. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. She know my has done me well. Hey. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Come and dance, come and dance. She know my time has done me Come and join me. Stand up, you stand up, stand up. You couldn't walk very well. Walk now, come, follow me. Jump, jump, 
Jump, jump, jump, jump. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Look at me. Your family members, I prophesy to you, your finance changes now. I prophesy to you, and I use this as a point of contact. Whatever the devil has used to cripple your life, I speak it right now. See, when the Lord does a miracle, there is an anointing. You take advantage of it. Miracles are languages. I command everything that has refused to walk in your life. This night, I command it to walk. I command it to walk. I command it to walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord increase you. Please, let's continue. Go ahead and play. God is doing great things. We are still going to take some more testimonies. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Go back, sir. We are going to take a few testimonies. And Benga, let's do it this way. There are people receiving miracles right now. See, the moment you find a miracle, don't sit back. Hallelujah. Uh, ushers will help them. Once you check your body, there are many things changing right now. I want you to move here quickly. They'll come and confirm you and will allow you to share. To the shame of the devil, go ahead. Both those that I'm praying for, those in the congregation, those who were delivered, something happened to you. Go ahead and pray. God is doing mighty things here. Sabarai Kabani Nagode Out Cheto Kabani Nagode Zemako Kabani Out 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 Nagode The Lord is showing me a wicked spirit tying this lady down. Let her go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Release her. And this delay, this thing you put in her stomach, take it out now. Take it out. Now. Let it go. Out! Just as you hold them, make sure you are praying in tongues. You must saturate the atmosphere with tongues. You don't just hold people like that. Devils are living. Whether it's through me or through you, they should go. Yes, Lord, let it go. By your power, by your fire. Oh, yeah. 
You felt something coming out. Yes. The devil that wants to remain in your body, he must let you go this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then I fell down to the ground and then I was brought here. I just felt very light. Very light. Yes. You are free in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. Any other testimony? Okay, while they come, let's just have the testimonies first. And Hallelujah. That's a powerful song. It's a miracle. Old school but powerful songs. Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. the anointing I can do stupid things but I'm not just acting foolishly where's the water is it not the water you brought for me I said you should give her I didn't say you should collect it huh I know why I drank it and I gave her take my dear you just do what I asked you to do take it 
There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water. Lord, be cleansed. Now, that demon, I see you in the spirit already. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Now, go. Out of her. Out of her. And return no more. Cancer. That's why I said cancer. Uh, uh, uh. That cancer. one they said. Uh, that one they said. Doctors told you. Yes. Did you bring your report? No. You didn't bring your medical report. No. Prostrate cancer. Uh, that what they said. You believe Jesus will heal you? Why not? Right now. Yes. Daddy, God will heal you right yes. now. How many of you believe God will heal our daddy? Cancer, you are a spirit. Mm. And in the name of Jesus, depart from this body now. Together with all the symptoms, prostrate cancer, go. Go. You will go back to the hospital and they will not see a trace of cancer in your body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for somebody. I'm seeing pile, pile pile and this is not just ordinary pile it's quite advanced please let's hurry up pile i need to prophesy on somebody look let me tell you something um this is this is a family are you getting my point this is a family and this is this is like a hospital it's a medical center. When you enter the hospital, if they say remove your clothes and lie down, you won't tell them, do you know I'm an adult? You will just lie down quietly because this is, this is a spiritual hospital where we deal with a lot of nonsense that Satan wants to bring in people's lives. This is not the only person. There are at least two other people. At least once we pray for you, don't come and stop us after the meeting and say, actually, I was trying. This is a family. Hallelujah. Jesus, there's one more person. Yes, Lord. Now! Thank you, Jesus. You are a wicked spirit. You are living. Shagapata. I see you already. You are going. I tell you, discernment is a powerful gift of the spirit. Content. I'm going to pray that many of us need, need discernment. Let her go. You see, medicine calls it pile. But look at the real thing. It would have been anything. That's why I tell you, go now. Please, don't waste our time. Go, leave. In the name of Jesus. 
just one more person. I hope that. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I need to pray for somebody. This is a funny case. Your money used to disappear and miss physically. Please. This is something that has been very serious. You will keep money, you will count it. It's not the same. Amount. I know some of you are funny until you see it happen in real life to people. Come out, the Lord is showing me. Physically, I don't just mean you spent it. You don't know what you did. This is something that has been surprising you. Please, there is a woman, an elderly woman too, who is supposed to be here. I'm seeing it. The Lord is showing me. Please, please, let's hurry up. I don't know why you are surprised that your money is missing when the Bible calls Satan a thief. <laughs> See, it's not about stealing. Do demons eat money? No, no. It's a language in the spirit. It's a symbol of oppression. Why will God mention a case like this? If not that God is leading you in your meeting, will you mention a, a case that doesn't make sense like this? The Lord will set you free. Hallelujah. These are activities of the devourer. Mama, you're welcome here. Jesus Christ will visit you. Thank you, sir. You believe that? Yes. Jesus Christ will visit you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Visit Mama even right now. Look, brothers and sisters, don't let any man confuse you. Wickedness is real. Are you getting my point? Wickedness is very real. Because, look at me. Where is your mother? In my place. Where is your place? Cameroon. Do you know why I called you? Do, do I know you are from Cameroon? Do you know why I'm talking to you? Because I saw light left this mama and came to you. Hold on, don't cry. What is wrong? Wait, hold on. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with your mother? They went to hospital. She's still suffering with the hand. I was praying and I wanted to move to the line, but I saw light and the Lord said, uh uh, address this lady's situation right now. Your mother, it has not been treated till now. They went to hospital, but it's still there. It's still there. Because you see, I'm seeing a signboard with obituary, and this thing would have happened since last year. Is this year? I'm seeing since last year. A sign of obituary, your mother. But we lost our sister too, our elder sister. Hold on now. It's the spirit of death. Hallelujah. We are going to rebuke it because this is what I'm seeing on you too. Look at me. That's why you dream. Dead people. Dead people. <laughs> dead people. You see dead people in your dream. They yes. come to you. Sometimes they're trying to give you something to eat. Yes. Is that true? You, the Lord will deliver you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go! That wicked spirit. What does the living have to do with dead people? Hallelujah. I need to pray for some people now with this kind of situation. Hold on. Uh, the Lord is ministering to me. There are at least five people. I want you to come and stand here quickly. You see dead people in your dream. Sometimes they try to force food on you. Please, hold up. The Lord is showing me. Let's just handle this once and for all. If you are still thinking about it, go back to your seat. Dead people, they come to you in your dream and they give you food. This is, this is the Lord. Please, separate the lines. Just stand here. It's a miracle service who will minister to you. Please make sure you don't go anywhere. I'm still going to prophesy. While we are doing that, did you bring your prayer request? Lift up your prayer request. If you didn't write it, you will be cheated. Please, in one or two minutes, any other person who has not written his prayer request, or I'm giving you two minutes. Send a text to your loved ones. Tell them forward your request quickly. We are going to collect it right now. The Lord gave me an instruction. Usually when we pray for the prayer request, we'll just go and burn it. But the Lord said I should pack everything and I'm going to be praying from this night till tomorrow morning on it. That's the instruction the Lord gave me. 
Let me see the devil that will stop your prayers from being answered. Hallelujah. Now, be healed. Please just write it. If you have not written it, we are giving you one minute. Those online, I hope media has a way of reaching them. Please. You can send the text to your loved ones right now. Tell them, send me your prayer request and you can add it to your paper. We don't read anybody's prayer request. We just pray on it. So if you think you wrote something and there are still some other things you should write, please write it. Please. I have my own prayer request. It's an instruction God gave us. We are not, please, if they need papers, can somebody help them? Okay. The ushers have papers. If you need papers, just wave your hands and the ushers will locate you. Thank you, sir. Let me just finish praying for these people. Be healed, right? Thank you, Jesus. That delay leaves your family now in the name of Jesus. Go! Out! Now! Out! Out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out. You too. You are following me like an usher. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, you can go back to your seat if I've attended to you. Let's just decongest this place. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I, need to, I need to really pray for you. This thing I'm seeing is not good. We need to pray. Because I'm seeing a ring. I'm seeing five rings on your hands. This is what I'm seeing. This is a spell. It must leave you now. It will not affect your home. It will not affect your life. It will not affect your home. We break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shataka balakata. I'm seeing fire burning you. Something is living. It's like an altar on fire. Shake up radoko sopra. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shekatataba. I see an altar. And this is like a village. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing like a village. I'm seeing the horn of a cow inside a shrine. Let it be on fire now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release you breakthrough, supernatural, inexplainable breakthrough because this thing tied the finance of her and her husband. I command its release now in the name of Jesus Christ. Instrumentalist, you are resting. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to deal, see, Immediately I finish with this. We are going to deal with marital issues. Marriage. Delay. This delay in marriage. We are going to handle it right now. Sister, look at me. You. See, you. Where you are. God is going to visit your family. God is going to visit you. Do you come? Come. This is one of your major requests. Come, run and come here. Come. Is it true? Is it true? What, what is it? Why? What is true? My sister, my elder Your elder sister yes, is not married. Yes, Every is just disappointment yes, here and there. And it's one of your major requests. Even as you were standing there, yes, you were telling God to visit you. To let you know God knows you. You will receive your own right now. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be for her sister. Now, that cause of marital delay, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. God is doing a major work. Major work in her. Major work. Major work. Kabada Pretekateba. Every altar of darkness. Please, if I pray for you, just look quickly. Go! Look at me, my dear. 
This is demonic. Don't put yourself in any sort of God in the name of friends. Eh? Don't let them do all kinds of things. Who made this mark on your body? Look at me. You're a very great lady. You're going to be very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. Don't forget about the body of Christ. Huh? You are an usher. You are acting as an usher. Come. Let me finish with you first before you continue. Come, hold my hand. She's serving in that. So, go. You are in the name of Jesus. You are leaving her now. Go. your hands together please those of you here what what do living people have to do with dead people many of these things you are seeing is not just about you are you getting my point i'm going to pray for you lift your hands lift it up Let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to release you. Many of you will be surprised. It will leave you. Father, every demonic thing that has to do with dead people that has brought your people in bondage right now in the name of Jesus I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit at the count of three let that power break out of your life my God the fire of God is strong one two three come now let the power of God set you free now 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 everything with dead people I separate you now in the name of Jesus it is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your prayer requests. Oh, you've dropped it. Okay, please bring them outside here quickly. While, now listen. Supernatural marriages. There are some of you, every relationship you enter, something must happen and it will scatter. But first and foremost, please, before marriage people, if you are in business here, yeah, come out. I don't mean if you want to do business, please. If you are in business, come out. If you come out here and we don't see you doing anything, don't come and lie here before God, please. You have started, you have started. Understand what I'm saying, please. Don't just be emotional. You are doing business that we can see everybody knows ah. it's time for your business to rise don't sit back this is why we are putting this program strings please Brothers and sisters, 
It's part of our mandate to prophesy and release prosperity upon people. And I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. That an anointing will come upon you. And that you will run with the spirit of Elijah. Many of you will be surprised at what will happen from this night. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Those who stand in Every mountain has giants. The bigger the giants, the greater the mountain. Until you conquer the giants that are in every business mountain, you will not prevail. Let me tell you, you can try and do all you know to do. But when those giants are conquered, it will be a landslide victory. And this is what I want to help you do. Lift your hands. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. of you need creativity many of you need favor some of you just need access please lift your hands no man brings himself out of a hole you need another person to help you hallelujah I tell you financial mantles will fall upon some of you here but first we need to kick out some giants from the mountain hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three those of you here, I just want you to shout just one word. Jesus, very loud. You will be surprised that there are some forces tying down your shops and your businesses. It will go and I will release grace. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? My God, I feel the power of God. Help me with the super. At the count of three. One, two, three. Let him go. Now. Let him go. Release his business. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Wicked men want to destroy this guy's business. I'm seeing people sitting down. And discussing. Let him go. It's a popular business. This woman. Social center. I'm seeing social center. So you do hair. I be hair. You are is it plaiting hair? Is it true? The fire of God is coming on your heart now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing somebody. You do dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. You wash and iron clothes, but this thing has not been working. Dry cleaning. You are not the only one. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Come. Hold your hands together. Sharp akata balada. Lift it up. Shende bada kata la kapa teke teke pa rakata kata pa kate kake pa kata rante pre kate kepa every power holding down this dry cleaning business in the name of Jesus go 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 in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah now in the name of Jesus I send a prophetic word to your business. I command dry bones leave dry bones leave 
dry bones live. Those who are looking for shops, we give you shops here. I don't care whether there's shop or not. We give it to you now. Wherever you wanted to put your business and they said they will not give you a place, go back and get your place. Those who need capital, may God by favor locate you this night. Even your enemies may they bless you. Hallelujah. Many of you need customers. I don't care whether school is on session or not on session. It's irrelevant. From the north to the south to the east all over Zaria and beyond. I call for those who should patronize you in the name of Jesus. Whoever has spoiled your name so that men don't want to patronize you. I change that testimony now. I change that testimony now. Hallelujah. Oga okay, John, photographers, two of you come. You cannot be serving in Koinonia and be like the rest. Hold your hands. Oga okay, John, look at me. Do you believe in what I'm saying? You believe in what I'm saying? You will be surprised. Lift your hands, both of you. Father, for the sake of your house, for the sake of your house, I hold your business. Step into a new dimension. By the power of the Holy Ghost, on common access, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on common access, take them to places they would never imagine. Give them opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Go and succeed. Go and prosper. Now look at... Let me tell you one big secret. Many of you, what you is greed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Greed. Greed. Some of you don't even tithe in your business. If you are not faithful in tithing, the devil will eat you up no matter how many days you pray and fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your personal tithe is the, as a ministry, we tithe. That's why no devil can touch anything here. Are you getting my point? Be faithful in tithing. Deal in integrity. I bless your business. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. Where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Let your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I command the forces of the spirit to align themselves and begin to walk in your favor. I command the earth to speak for your favor. In the name of Jesus, go and return with your testimonies. Everybody rise up as we pray on the request. Your blessing and honor and glory and power. Please, if you have not submitted your request, do it quickly. Blessing and glory, honor and power forever. Hallelujah. Please don't burn them after after the prayers. Please pack them, put them in a bag, take them to my house. You will hear unusual testimonies unusual testimonies hallelujah in one minute stretch your hands here and begin to pray radically in tongues and say lord now is the time please outside stretch your hands towards the screen
in the name that is above all names. As I walk upon this request, I command them to be turned into testimonies. This spiritual technology unto the God that answers prayer shall all flesh come. My God, I pray from now, let testimonies erupt. Solve impossible situations. Change impossible situations. I stand under this apostolic unction in the name that is above all names. Let there be the signs of an apostle. I command, I invoke the heavens. Let there be a shifting. Let there be a movement. Let there be a release of miracles, financial miracles, marital miracles, health miracles, job miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before I prophesy, hallelujah, you know that there seems to be a yoke, please don't be emotional, of marital delay in your family, even if it has not affected you. Come out and stand here quickly. If we are too many, just stand, just stand on the lines. Please. Take this seriously. 40 years, no marriage. 45 years, no marriage. Or ladies, no marriage. Or men in your family, they marry and die. Let's get that devil out of your life right now. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage on time is the will of God. See, brothers and sisters, if you're doubting whether this will happen, go back to your seat. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I told you nothing just happens. Nothing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you here. We need to end this. Many of you just came and met battles you don't know anything about, yet you are suffering it still. I don't care how old you are. We must open that marital door. And not just to one anyhow man because your age is already advanced. They say, let's just manage. No. No. You're going to marry. Listen, sisters, don't marry an irresponsible man in the name of just trying to manage time. And our brothers, don't just jump and marry any Jezebel that will kill your life and destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. We need to break this thing. Because many families are suffering this thing. And for those who have gotten married, you see that there is no child. And by extension, even praying for barren people right now. Lift your hands. Father, in this November miracle service, I'm praying right now. Many of you will be surprised. The spell of marital delay. Instrumentalist, are you ready? Look at me. What I'm seeing is rain in the spirit. When I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. That rain will drop. Because there are many of you, I'm already seeing rings. Spiritual rings. Covenants. This is what is stopping you. Please shout it with all your heart. My God, as they shout, this rain fall. Listen. Listen. There will be a divorce here. Many of you, I'm seeing rings on your hands as you're standing, meaning you are already married to demonic entities. This is the divorce. We are going to cancel this thing now. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. Lift your hands. Father, I pray by this power as they count, Lord, I pray that any spiritual marriage that is not of God, 
that is tying physical marriages. It will catch fire now. At the count of three, get set. One, two, three. Shake it, take it, take it. Now, spiritual marriages. Break, 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 break. Every covenant, marital covenant, entered in on your behalf. It catches fire now. We command a divorce. A divorce now. A divorce now. A divorce now. This is what is responsible for the delay of many of you. Pretty lady, no husband. Virtual sister, no husband. Handsome, responsible brother, no wife. People say it's how Nigeria is. There's nothing like that, oh. There's nothing like it's how Nigeria is. I prophesy to you, for many of you, especially for those of you who are of marriageable age, by this time next year, return with your supernatural marriages. I change what needs to be changed. We shift what needs to be shifted. Hallelujah. Sisters, hear me. Wherever your husband is, I don't care where he is. If he's alive, I bring him into your life. Brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy the struggle is over. Now, the struggle is over. You are not a liability to any sister. You are a blessing. Therefore, the sister that will agree for you and mean it from her heart, I bring her into your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for any of you that have seen traces of barrenness in your family, they get married, but they can't deliver normally except through CS. I change that report now in the name of Jesus. I change that report now. I change it now. I change it now. Please return to your seat quickly. Return to your seat quickly. Everybody rise. Let me just speak the last prophetic word. And then we'll wrap up. We're out of time. Just leave them. If, if they cannot stand up, just leave them there. Please, quickly, quickly. Everybody stand up in honor of the Lord. Lift up your hands, strings. Boy, stay students, stand up. This gentleman have been here all the way. Hold your hands together. Lift it up and look at me. They came for IT all the way from Eboye. And God from, from Kogi, oh the Kogi guys. You will catch fire. Take it to your campus. Set every devil in Kogi. Drive them out. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. You will receive an anointing. You will receive a mantle. See Kabbalah. Elijah said, if you can see me as I'm taking up. Father, in the name of Jesus, let something mighty fall upon these ones. Grace for signs and wonders. Grace for uncommon revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are the boy students? Who are going back quickly come out please save our time a boy students that came on it in zaria appreciate them as they come come and line up quickly it's time to catch the fire and take it to a boy state all of you hold your hands quickly you didn't just come for it you came for a spiritual it lift your hands lift your hands
you will go back with fire. Zekata. At the count of three, the power of God will fall on you. Right now, get ready. One, two, take it now. 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 Go and burn. Go and burn. Set your campuses on fire. In the name of Jesus, heal the sick, cast out devils. Mike, right? Mike, allow where is he could be come. Hallelujah. I, I said I was going to pray for him. Hallelujah. I heard that he just signed a check to pay off for this venue. Hallelujah. I'm told. Come. You cannot give into the kingdom and remain ordinary. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflow. Let a financial mantle come, O God. According to Proverbs, he said, For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. I lay my hands upon you. Step into a new level of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord honor you. I give your seed a voice. Go round the earth, gather your kind, and return back to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Everybody, please lift your hands. I always tell you that this is the part that I love most. I know we are late, but it's better for your destiny to change. You must return next month with your testimony. Please lift your hands. Many of you don't know the power of prophetic statements. Where's the guy from University? Joss. University of Joss. Where's University of Joss again? Come quickly, please. Save our time. You will catch that fire and take it to your campus. Drive every devil out. Yes, Lord Jesus, for you will do mighty things. Lift your hands, both of you. I'll be wait on you for fire. Take them to another level, oh God. Take them to another dimension. Fill them with uncommon power. Let their limitations melt. Lord, as these hands come, let an anointing come upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. All right, foot me now, quickly. Foot me now. Foot me now. Please come out. both of you hurry up quickly hold your hands together lift it up father in the name of Jesus may they step into amazing levels of the anointing take the anointing to your campuses now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands. Every closed door. Every door that has been closed over your life and your family. I command right now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Everything called failure in your life, failure, it will become a forgotten testimony in the name of Jesus.
that spirit that causes delay it works for others until it is your turn right now in the name of jesus shake it take a i command acceleration you will run like elijah you will run like elijah all those trusting god for jobs by 28 december the next miracle service i don't know how god did it. lord shake end to end of every office and give your people jobs receive it receive it receive it hallelujah every terminal disease afflicting you or any member of your family right now i command that disease on your mark set go 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 hallelujah hallelujah everything the devil has stolen in your family joy peace progress please believe what i'm about to speak into your life everything the devil has stolen i prophesy right now receive sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration hallelujah i command the favor that distinguishes a man the favor that separates you from others in the name of jesus let that mantle of favor let it come upon you now receive it receive it receive it every spirit of death that says you will not see december lift your hands this is very important the way people are dying like chickens every spirit of death i put a mark of the blood and i command it to pass by your family pass by your family pass over pass over hallelujah all those trusting god for admission you have it finally I said you have it finally. I don't care who is the rector or who is the VC. That's none of my business. We legislate in this place. Receive your admission. And anyone here that any lecturer is saying you will not graduate, they will sign your paper as you graduate. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for your finance. We are a blessed people and I pray for you. Right now, whatever makes you not to tithe, whatever makes you not to give and obey the laws that bring increase, whatever makes you feel God is cheating you, I curse you away from that deception. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. And I pray, whatever is holding your finance and that of your family, I command you to release it now. In the name of Jesus. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Please keep standing. I know we are late. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. You've never made, please bring the announcement. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Everybody keep standing, please. No moving up and down, please. Inside and outside. This is a very important announcement now. You've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Please look at me. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There are some of you who have made a decision for Jesus, but you have found yourself derailing. You've backslidden, and you need to return to the Lord. As I count, I will just count one to four because of time. I know there are people outside, there are people inside. We want to welcome you. Don't be ashamed. Run to Jesus Christ right now. The Lord bless you as you come. One. Please leave your seat and come. Quickly, quickly. Two. 
Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed, please. Inside and outside. Hallelujah. Run to Jesus Christ. It's time to make everything new. He died for your sins. Three. Please, quickly, quickly. Don't just stroll around. Run. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Because it's a gift. The free gift. Hallelujah. Finally, four. Hallelujah. You can still join us. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands, those of you here. Thank you for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Hallelujah. From today, I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that I'm a child of God. I'm born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, live my life. The power of sin over my life is broken. I'm a child of God. Let her go. You are hearing her confession and you are still remaining. Let her go. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for making this decision. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. I'd like you to follow the ushers. That's the Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.